Thank you all for being here. We are uh, doing this uh, as a hybrid meeting over Zoom, so we are also recording this, so we watch for those that were unable to attend or attend through Zoom tonight. Um, this is the Union Street uh, reconstruction project, and we will get going on our presentation. So, oh, Union Street. Make sure we can share it online. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you again, the Union Street Improvement and Reconstruction Project. Uh, for those who have not signed in, um, I'll ask at the end of the presentation uh, or the meeting, please do so. So that we can keep you informed. Yes, that is to uh, keep you all informed. Uh, we have an email list that we'd like to send out uh, updates. So it helps us keep all you informed so nothing happens that is unexpected and we can keep information flowing. Um, So I'm Zach Grumman, the Assistant City Engineer of Portsmouth. I'll be the project manager on this. We are working on this in uh, conjunction with Mac Construction. Uh, we have Robert Mack from Mac Construction who will be doing the construction. Uh, we have CNA, who is a design engineer, who will help be uh, overseeing the construction, as well as John McCarthy of John Turner Associates. So the agenda for this meeting is we are going to go over uh, kind of the overview of the project, and then uh, construction schedule um, and some what to expect during construction, uh, traffic control plan, uh, and uh, resident coordination. So that's our outreach to you and how you can reach us. And then uh, public comment section and questions. At this point, we're gonna hand it off to Bill. Bob Seaman. Thank you, Zach. Uh, yes, so we're going to run through kind of a little bit about the uh, uh, project development and where we're at now with construction and what you can expect as we move ahead here. So um, we're going to take a little, little look at where we ended up with the final design, um, we introduced the contractor and our resident who will be on site, uh, and John will be, you know, kind of the resident's first point of contact, we'll be doing a lot of coordination coordinating with folks uh, as work is upcoming near driveways and impacts and water service impacts and those sorts of things, uh, getting into houses as needed. Um, and if you have issues, then John will be up there mostly full time that you can uh, approach him and, and discuss with him. Uh, and yeah, talk a little bit about what we're gonna expect for construction. So the project uh, purpose again was to um, eliminate stormwater groundwater for entering the sewer system. So right now, drainage system is combined with a sanitary sewer on Union Street and under an EPA consent decree, the city is required to separate those. So that's the main objective of this project. Uh, and additionally, we'll, while we're doing all this work, be replacing the water main and services, upgrading all the sewer main and services and upgrading the storm drainage. And then when all the underground work is done, put back everything with a new uh, roadway and new concrete sidewalk. Uh, so one of the first orders of business will be the storm drain replacement and a connection in order to make the separation work, which now flows kind of back lot behind the, the condos at 211 Union. Um, we need to construct a new drain line down Middle Street um, and that will be one of the first things they do is starting at Miller and Middle, start that drain construction and start heading towards Union Street to construct that uh, drain line. Uh, this, the, the, yeah, the, the uh, and then moving on to sewer upgrades and eventually the next step will probably be doing sewer on Middle Street and then extending into Union Street after those two lines are in place. Um, can I stop you there for a sec? Yeah. Just um, kind of on the presentation, we kind of glossed over the gas work that's going to be going on while the drainage right. work is going yep. to go on. I want to mention that. Yes. It's, it's it's good point. Point. Right. Ahead of, uh, ahead of the work that has to happen on Union Street, uh, the existing gas main conflicts with where we need to put some of our proposed utilities. So while Mac Construction is working out on Middle Street, constructing drainage and sewer, uh, and I think starting in early June, 
schedules are a little bit up in the air still, but as of, as of we know right now, uh, Unitel, so they're the owner of the gas utility, which is separate from all the city's utilities. They will be replacing the gas main on Union Street um, between Middle and Austin Street. So that will be some immediate construction, probably the first impacts to you for Union Street residents um, between Middle and Austin. Yeah, and so the existing one is out and the main in the proposed gas main will be on the southern, underneath the southern sidewalk. So they're going to be ripping that up, reconstructing the gas main, and they'll be putting that back as a gravel sidewalk uh, in anticipation of the future sidewalk construction. Uh, so, all right, but the project will separate stormwater and sewer on Union Street. That's the, that's the primary uh, objective and then a result in full road reconstruction of Union Street and a trench patch, see how things go and potentially be paving some of Middle Street. So this is what's out there today. Uh, so right now the combined sewer and drainage, so right now again, the drainage comes into the sewer, the combined sewer drainage heads out um, in what we call backlot sewer around the new 211 condominium building and then through yards and out into Cabot Street and then eventually out to Middle Street. Uh, and right, the requirement is to separate the flows. So as we develop the project, we had configured it so that that is the base bid, the minimum amount of work that needs to be done to make that separation happen. The hope was that we could extend the limits of construction beyond just that minimum area, Union Street, um, which we'll show on the next page here, kind of what we're doing. So the next section, so this is the, the minimal work that needs to happen is that we need a new drain line and a new sewer main uh, to separate the storm water and sanitary sewer flows. Uh, so that was the base bid of the project and the minimum work that needs to happen. And we've designed improvements on the rest of Union Street, um, out to State Street and Austin Street, and also some work on Cabot Street and Coffins Court. Um, but unfortunately, bids came in that we could only afford to do this minimum projects. So we had those in bid alternates um, to award if funding, depending on how funding lined up uh, with actual construction bids in the whatever two or three years of the project development from when you establish kind of these fundings to when we get to today, costs have gone up a lot. And so now we're at a point where we're need to get this minimum work done. And this will be the project we have to move forward with for now. Uh, and with the expectation that, you know, these additional projects will need to be filled in for the future. I think that's a fair characterization. So that's saying that Cal that uh, Coffin's Court is not out there? That's right, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately for now, the back lot sewer connection and the work on Coffin's Court isn't part of this project because it's not needed to separate the flows. The sewer just goes into the sanitary sewer there. It's really just the combined flows on Union Street. So that is something that is designed now and planned, but it's not part of this initial phase of work. So what's shown here, and we have some other more detailed plans coming up here in the, in the future, we'll be able to see a little bit better, but this kind of shows the overview of the project. Again, they'll be starting with a drain line at Miller, working their way down middle, so you'll, you'll see them coming. And if you're on middle, you'd be impacted from them and then uh, probably step back and construct that green line, which is the sewer from kind of Cabot down to Union, and then work their way into Union um, after that. So yeah, here's the, here's kind of the limits of the roadway and sidewalk work that will be done as a part of this project, which just includes, you know, the intersection of Union and Austin, all of Union, the reconstructing driveways, uh, new concrete sidewalk. There'll be some grass panels where we can fit them. There's some areas where they wouldn't fit. It'll be a little bit wider sidewalk um, and full roadway reconstruction. And then uh, Middle Street, we will, uh, it'll be trench patched for now with the potential of kind of milling and overlaying that whole section, depending on how things go. And the next slide shows kind of the utility work. Uh, so yeah, new drainage, new water line, new sewer line on Union, and new connections down middle uh, out to Miller. 
So as far as our time frames, uh, the next slide, we show our schedule. Uh, we've got bids in March. We awarded the project to Mac Construction in April. Uh, construction will start. Uh, there'll be some activity starting next week out on Middle Street and probably some mobilization of some equipment. Uh, they're they're going to be doing some investigations and then um, excavation and real Range construction will start in earnest, I think, uh, May 15th, Monday, May 15th. So that'll be the start of uh, work on Middle Street. Uh, it's expected that, no, it's okay, it's expected that they will get most all work done through this construction season through the end of this year. Uh, and it may be some final work extends into next spring, final paving. Usually we'd let the road sit with just a, kind of the first layer of the binder layer of paving uh, to make sure things are all settled out before they do the finished course, uh, which will probably won't happen until next spring. So there will be a little bit of work that uh, will be left for the spring 2024. Uh, yep, so there's start date, construction work hours are 7 a.m. through 6 p.m. I don't know, Bob, if that's your typical work time frames or if you guys are knocking off before six, typically that's, uh, those are longer days for contractors. Um, I'd like to be home by five if I can, but yes, yep. yep. So it's yeah, usually it's usually it's seven to six is uh, the allowable work hours in the city of Portsmouth. So we include that as the ends of the time, but uh, typically it's earlier in the day. Yes, seven a.m. Yeah. four thirty sounds like will be a normal construction days. Um, uh, let's see. So yeah, there will be, as we're trenching across to these utilities and they, they happen sequentially, you know, we're gonna be installing a sewer line, a drain line, a water line, and they step back each time to come back down the street to do that. Um, we'll, John will be coordinating with folks as we're anticipating any driveway blockages or anything like that. So we'll be knocking on doors and leaving notes and saying, hey, it looks like you should see them coming to the kind of slowly be marching down that direction, but um, just to make sure we're not uh, impeding anyone's access, uh, move your car out of your driveway if you need to, those sorts of things. Um, the road the work on Middle Street, there'll be, there'll be weekly patching of the trenches there. Um, and there is a couple of utility pole relocations required. Uh, so that's kind of initially what's going to happen. And then on the next slide, um, there will, so the work, there's a lot of underground utility work that's going to happen on Union Street in a fairly confined area with the gas main, drainage, sewer, and water. And, uh, you know, current state <clears throat> federal regulations require 10 foot of separation between the water and the sewer pipes in order to make all that work and make it fit uh the contractor is going to have to install what we call temporary bypass water on Union Street so there'll be the underground pipe will be shut down they'll be installing a overland pipe and connecting those to your services um it'll be buried when it crosses uh, or ramped up over at driveways and intersection crossings um but there will be uh you know a, a minor outage in your water service when they make that connection, they gotta cut the connection to the existing pipe and then reconnect it and separate water. And you're gonna see a pipe on the ground that's providing that temporary service. So that temporary service is put in place so that we can excavate out the old water main and use that corridor for the, the new utilities. So that'll be something that's happening once they get down. That won't be a, an initial phase of work, but that'll be sometime later in the summer. And again, we'll, we'll keep folks updated as so what the schedule is. We should be posting kind of updated schedules, what to expect over the next couple of weeks on the project website so you can kind of see what's happening. And that's what the sign up is for because we send out an email specifically to all of you with that update. You don't have to go look at it. Yep. So right there um there may be some short duration water outages. I should notify you it's construction Unexpected things happen, especially when you're dealing with 100 year old utilities uh, and they can hit water mains and have to shut down things. So there, there are sometimes unplanned outages, but for whenever 
we know we're going to have to make a swap from the permanent water, existing water to temporary, we let you know a couple days ahead of time. Uh, and it should be fairly quick within a couple hours. We can make that swap over. Uh, so I think that's it for this one. There will be some ledge removal, which will be loud, but um, should be less on Union Street than out in Middle Street. We're on the next slide. Uh, so, right on Middle Street and on <laughs> Union Street, there will likely be uh, alternating one way traffic as the often seen construction zone. So, there'll be a section of work for a couple of 300 feet that they'll have to cut down in the work zone, and it'll be one way traffic. Uh, back and forth to there. I mean, that's not much different than what's on Union Street now with kind of parked cars. There won't be parking allowed in the construction area. So there'll be blocked off areas where you cannot park in the construction zone. Um, and then there'll be one way access through that area. So resident access will be maintained at all times, and emergency access will always be prioritized if anything comes up. Um, but there's no expected. Uh, road closures. There'll be times where we're crossing the road and that sort of thing, but not not any permitted uh, or planned detour. Um, there, because of the configuration of the sewer main, we have to raise up the elevation of it in Union Street a little bit, which requires some plumbing modifications to some homes. And we're going to be reaching out to folks and at construction will be leading that work and we'll be helping coordinate with folks and letting know what's going on. Um, but there's uh, some areas where some homes, the, the service of the home inside the home needs to be raised up. Um, if that is the case, we have reached out to those properties already. So if you haven't heard, yes, you haven't heard from us, you are not in that. Group. So there's only two or three of those. And uh, so that'll take some coordination. Um, but we will be sure to put some people on that stuff. That's the sewer or the water? That's the sewer. Sewer. the sewer. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, notify you in the plants, the water outages, block driveways, service connections. Uh, I mentioned before that um, John McCarthy and this information will go off the website too. We'll be First point of contact, he'll be the liaison in contact with all residents and the contractor to see what's going on. And, and if you have any concerns, please uh, approach him. And uh, Zach is the city's contact as the project manager at the city. So John will be there every day on site watching the construction happen. So you will see his face up and down Union and Hill. So if you have uh, anything you wish to ask or talk about, be right outside your door and grab him, ask him a question. Uh, in the absence of John, uh, please reach out to me. You can call or text the emergency six four three. This should be pretty present on the top. Uh, good. We're on the next one. So this I mentioned the city's website. So right, this is the link to that page. The specific project page on the public works page uh, that you can get to that will have updates and we'll try to update the schedule and kind of let people know we'll have a presentation on here, some plans so you can see uh, what's going on in your own time and ready uh, get on the email list. You can sign up there and if you're signed in tonight, we'll include you on the list to send out email updates. That's that's all I had. Uh, you should really expand a little bit on parking. And on the work hours, <laughs> where people are going to be able to park when they're not going to be able to park, that sort of thing. Yep, sure. So, uh, you know, my expectation is that there will be an active work zone. There'll be some mobilized equipment and materials that'll be taking up some space that'll be on the side of the road, taking up some parking spaces. There'll be an active construction zone where we we'll have to. You know, there'll be notices posted through certain areas where you cannot park. Um, and then the, I would expect the other areas to still be open for parking. So that'd be limited to the extent we can, but it's going to be an active construction zone where they're going to be going to river and there'll be utilities going in and work being done in the parking areas. So that'll, that'll, it'll definitely have the impacts to parking on, particularly on Union Street and, and Middle Street as they 
they move down. There's more room on Middle Street, but um, the east side of the road and Middle Street will have the greatest impacts uh, as they do the draining work. So that being said, the contractor generally works from, as it says on the schedule, 7 a.m. Generally speaking, we allow residents to park their cars on the edge of the road at night when we're not working. Uh, we do ask that the cars move promptly at working time, or we're going to run into conflicts, uh, which we want to avoid. Uh, but keep in mind that during the, on the weekend, of course, the uh, contractor won't be there. So parking won't be an issue on the weekend. And uh, sorry. More than an audience. <laughs> More than an audience. Yeah. Uh, I'm being close to some of the city's uh, instruction manager. So uh, I'll be helping uh, the project team as well. Peter Rice is here. He's the public works director as well. So we'll be here to answer questions after, we, after we're done. But um, So generally speaking, as Phil said, uh, some of the equipment will be on the side of the road. And we, won't, we won't move the construction equipment away for the weekend, but anywhere that they're not part that is a normal parking space will be available on off hours. Just the parking center work will begin at seven o'clock. And uh, so we if we're gonna be blocking your driveway, as they said, we'll come and notify you and we'll notify you ahead of time so that the last pain on your door. Um we want to avoid kind of the last minute wrapping on the door thing. Uh, we will try to notify you ahead of you know, a day at a time whenever uh, we're going to be impacting you. But uh, we understand that parking is very tight. So uh, just be cognizant of the work zone and what we're trying to get done. Keep in mind that the, the faster the contractor can get through the job, the faster the slower. Yes. Um. According to the map you had with the marked areas for construction, it didn't go as far as uh, where I live, is 88 Union Street. Does that mean that there is construction? I just didn't see it, or, or is it only up to the green lot? Yeah, no, right now the limits of construction will end at Austin Street from middle. Okay, so when when are you going to construct in front of my? So the bids came in higher than we had anticipated. We do have the design for that. Um, we're anticipating that if this project comes in under budget or uh, at about budget, we'll try to do Austin, sorry, uh, Union from Austin to state uh, sometime next summer. If it comes in higher than anticipated for other reasons, we'll need to incorporate it in the capital improvement plan which had already been set before we went out to bid. So it'd be put into the capital improvement plan uh, near the end of this year, October. So then it would be set uh, July 1st, 24th. Assuming that we actually get funding. Assuming that we get That's funding. That's the biggest Yes. So don't, don't phrase it like it's gonna be the next year. Right. So, but would any of, the, any of the construction going on down the street somehow affect Either my water, my pressure, or whatever. I don't really know. It is likely because you're drinking off the same water main that when they do the switch over and they run the temporary water that Phil was talking about, yeah. we'll have to have a water shutdown that will affect you that day. And we'll also probably have to have one when the permanent main is installed and they reconnect you. So, probably those two days. You will have a, a multiple hour, but not all day, water shutdown. Other than that, I can't foresee that you're going to have much impact this year. My only other concern is certainly winter time. Without all this um, increased sidewalk space, uh, there isn't much room to get down Union. And my concern is the sidewalk. Um, Parameters, which I guess are mandatory, but I see Columbia Street, which was recently done, and two cars cannot get by side by side if two cars parked you know, on either sidewalk on Columbia Street. It just seems really narrow for all the brand new construction. Um, you'd have to wait for a car to get by before you went. And that's actually, so that's a lot of that's potential. So that cars can't just go down the road. We want cars to come over even more kind of slow. So that was done intentionally. Yeah, this I think I think this 
the we had a discussion as we went through our first public meetings about the road section and when the other side of the east side of Middle Street Union was done, that is 28 feet. We're a little bit wider than that, 30 feet. You know, there's some trade-offs and balances to that. It's still a similar situation, but what Dave's talking about, right, is that when you have that situation, you eliminate a lot of cut-through traffic because it is more difficult to get through there because you're pulling off on the driveway and letting someone else go. Um, and so that that is an inconvenience when you're trying to go, but it also slows down traffic and eliminates cut through traffic. And so you're trying to you're trying to balance those two things as best you can. Yes. I live on Coffin's Court and I saw the diagram of sewer replacement lines. This um, sewer line goes through my backyard, through a couple other backyards. They're old arcade pipes made out of clay with tree roots constantly going through them. We have sewer problems, backups. We have to take care of it ourselves, calling road rooter guys, because the city doesn't return our calls. What are we gonna do? We're not gonna place our sewer line on our street. So keep in mind that we're fully aware of the project, of our problem that you have. Uh, in order to rectify that, we are at CMA. We have a full design that will rectify your problem. This but we don't have design. the funding yet okay. to fix that particular piece of the puzzle. So uh, this initial puzzle piece it was set up to fix multiple other adjacent pieces of the puzzle. If that makes sense. It does. So, so this was the area that was the worst, and it's the area that was dictated by the EPA that we had to separate. So we're on our consent decree by the federal government to do this project. So we had to do this project and we have to do it both in this order because it makes engineering logic to start at base puzzle piece. We had to start there. Now that our design is done, and now that we have a holistic design and we know what needs to be built, we have a very good idea what we want. So because we don't have the money, we will be putting your project in the CIP in the next round, now that we know how much it's gonna cost. And we just really have to just wait for funding. Can I so we know what the solution is. We just gotta wait for money. So oh, are you we have to wait for can can <laughs> we anticipate in the next we all have to wait for funding. We're all involved. In the next two years. I mean, we we have both both of our so we're next between twenty and thirty. Essentially, we get sewer backup. Her backup, if she she'll back up every ten months, we'll back up. We're aware on every five months. But, but nobody's doing anything. No, we did do something. We hired CMA. We have a full design that costs a lot of money. So we're ready to go. Okay. We just need construction. So until that, until ours is repaired, yeah. What are we going to do? Because when we have a backup. I had a backup last October. It cost me $965 to call a road to road guy. I called the city um, public works. Nobody ever returned my call. The same thing has happened to them. So am I going to have to pay $1,000 or more a year just to maintain every time I get a sewer backup into my lease? Well, it's definitely more because you have to sterilize everything. So. I have a question. Is there a way to do maybe a Band-Aid fix and just change out that pipe? So it's it's we not like a full so problem. Um, the reason why there's conflict, and I can't believe anybody from Florida Doris didn't call you back. I'm they, shocked, and I've never like we always call people back. So I'm sorry that happened. Okay, but the reason why there's a little bit of conflict is because the pipe goes across the private properties. The city that's not a city pipe. The city has no rights to the pipe. It's your pipes. And so, I know that. And, and so the, or, the way that you saw ordinance is written. The property owner is responsible for their services. So I understand it's expensive. I understand it's frustrating. Uh, we are working as best we can to relieve this issue. Uh, but in the near term, you know, you're going to need to maintain it if there is a backup. Um, we can explore options to see if there's anything that can be done. Uh, but just so you're aware, we have limited options relative to the private property aspect of this project. Okay, so on that note, your picture shows that the pipe is doesn't really go through my neighbor's yard, but I've lived there for 39 years, and the pipe really does go through somebody else's yard. 
which I have no control over. I have no rights to that pipe. Right. Nor do we. Right, nor do we. That's why we're doing Yeah, this, this isn't something that we would do now, which is why we didn't, just, the fix is not this, right? When they installed this however many decades ago, it went through people's backyards, and that's the situation it's stuck now. The, 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 Ultimate design and the city subjective is to get those mains out to the street where yes. there's public so, access. And, that's and, 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 it, and it works. Yeah. And we can we can yeah. get a red out of sewer main cost for a that you can get to. It's two point one. Uh just, so, so, yeah, just yeah. have that I really wanted that to happen because I understand pretty no, bad it would have been great. And that was our first part that and the industry were our first so, alternative. The, the coffin support section of this project is two point one million dollars. That one. Out of the total, out of the total, when you did the project, so that we did not have that additional. Total. So the phase of the building is almost four, four million. So yeah, so it's good. Yeah. So yeah. Another thing, honestly, the I understand the, the environmental aspect of doing Coffin's Court, but but honestly, I don't need you to necessarily do Coffin's Court. I only want you to do it so that I don't consistently have sewer backup. So the band aid fix for me, which I understand there's the private land issue, but that's what I need out of this project. Sure. My road is crap, but I don't care. That means those people come down. Sure. And as I said before, the, it's unfortunate people don't um, sewer ordinance is written such that private property owners are responsible for their sewer services. It's not the city's um, responsibility. We are working to address this so that you have improved sewer services, even though it's not required by the ordinance. We understand that it's a pain in that. You understand this. I, I lived in a property that had sewer backups, uh, Pleasant Street, and uh, Pleasant Street on um, Maplewood Avenue. It was terrible. It was really difficult to deal with, but you know, I had to pay for that. Uh, and you know, the, we are working to help to get this addressed in the near term. There may be, you know, you know, you get to explore options, whether you can sleeve the line by pushing a smaller diameter pipe down to the you know, you know, existing pipe. But it's it's private property that we cannot um, go on without you know clear direction opposed to digging up someone's backyard. Um, so it is not um, it's not an easy issue. I understand, uh, and you know we are working to get this dealt with, and it's a significant investment. So um, with our property lines ending within about ten feet of our house, where does our responsibility end? And that person's responsibility. Well, this is the challenge with historic. Portsmouth, where people just built stuff and really never got any easements, had any documentation. Um, obviously, this is not something that was sanctioned by anybody. Um, the neighbor probably was a brother or an uncle, and when they just did it, they said, go to it. It's not a big deal. Never thinking that they would need to have a property to sell, and they'd have to have some sort of maintenance agreement to be able to deal with that. Um, you know, I, I would encourage you to reach out to the inviting property owners and say, you know, hey, can we take a line through there? Temporary, you know, it's no, it's, it's more, it's, it's more than it's the neighbor it's part. The neighbor part. Well, and, 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 and this would be a perfect opportunity for us to understand from the construction company if we as a collective group needed to or... look at something like that because it's you'll get to us and we understand the bunch of side, but yeah, coffin's court is not high priority and it's a huge pain in the ass for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We have we have a problem that can't necessarily doesn't we don't want to wait for three to five years. Yep. So and we that. appreciate and understand this. Yeah. So, this, this so on, on all those lines, how do we get this funding in the near term and not stick it on the CIP, which I know is not you know funded. It's planned and priorities change all the time on the CIP. So how do we get this done in the short term? So not. We have During a, this, we have a but limited, subsequent, we have a limited amount of money. Yeah, I, 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 I know, Peter, 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 I, Peter, I know that. But how do we get this done? Is it political? Is it grants? What do, What do we do to get this done? Get the it, money. We, to get the money. We did. I mean, literally, your your plows went through this year. They did a pretty good job keeping their coffins court open, but they tore up all the pavement in front of my house. I got water in my basement. I mean, it needs to get fixed. Right. The, the pavement that was damaged get repaired in the near term. That's a that's a road issue. That's a budget for that type of thing. To come up with an additional two point one million dollars in sewer funds, it, is, it would require um, 
bonding authorization from city council. Okay. It would require, you know, in addition of jumping the queue relative to all the other projects that are in the capital. Yeah, how does it get to jump the queue when it was when it was theoretically already in the process project. an existing capital improvement plan that lists all the projects that are identified here? We would need to say jump the queue in the in the in the, plan. In the plan. Yes. So I you know we understand what you're asking. Um you know, I, I will sit down with staff and see you know what we can possibly do. And I, we're not gonna be able to come up with two point one million dollars. Um, so you know it's how about a quote on what it takes to get us yeah. done into that line. Just and maybe pipe. and maybe it's something we have to we have to consider as a as a financial obligation. All right, I, I understand the request. Um I can't promise you anything. Um the contractor's job is to do this job. To do a side job is not when, when you bid a project like this, they bid on production, they bid on big pipe, they bid the dollars they put together not to do small uh, service projects. Small service projects uh, can be much more challenging, uh, can also, you know, there's a lot of things that go to it. So I would not want to take Bob's time away from doing the project that's driven by an EPA deadline. Um, but there are other contractors that have the capability to do this. Um, I'm not but if Bob that. could give us an estimate, is that do the work? We're looking for an estimate because it may not be something that we just we have. I, I think what you want to do probably isn't what Bob wants to do. I mean, what you may be able to do is line your sewer service, uh, and that will give it some more integrity and smooth it out and maybe cut the roots out of it and that sort of thing. And that's not Bob. There's other people that do that, and we can we could get you pointed in that direction. That'd be great. I mean, the other approach is that you just do periodic. Inspections, I uh, get into agreement with the group that evaluator to come down and just clean it out on a regular basis. So, yes, there's money associated with that, but it's cheaper money than going out and putting a sewer line in the backyard that you're going to ban. Right. And at least, That's true. at least the, you know, know I have a backup plan. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you, if you, the other thing, point us in the right direction is people who might be interested in this project. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the other thing you can do is you can install a backflow preventer. Uh, on your line so that if you start to get back up and it'll, it'll surcharge in your system immediately so you'll see it first before it spills out. But those are other there's there's a number of ways to do it. But this project this time does not have funds available to us. Uh, we will look at it, kick it around and see if there's other options. We understand the problem. So how long is this queue? Of the project. It, it'll it'll get it right into it's it'll get right into the it'll get right into the CIP. It's just that it's a process to get the CIP approved. Um, in order to get uh, get it done. How, how do we get the funding? I I, 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 I I trust you. It's, it's going to get in the, the CIP. How do we get the funding? And I'm just going to use an analogy. John, Peter, when Peter, when Peter, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, but listen just, to me please, please let me finish. What I'm trying to get at is that. I know there's gonna there's some process, and I'm gonna use an analogy. We have a skate park, it was over over cost, and it was funded, the additional fund. How do we how do how do we use that project as an analogy to get this funded? We can uh, we can bring it to the city council and request. Yeah, that's so, what it takes. Okay. okay. You see that. It's, I mean, Peter, I, I'm not blaming you, I'm, and I understand that this engineering, but this, you, you've heard me for at least 10 years about Coffin's Court, and every time I've talked to you, I've trusted that, oh yeah, it's going to be part of the sewer separation project, and it's not, and I get that that's the right way to do it, to your point, but it's either underestimated, uh, it's not funded, or there's not some kind of a strong mechanism to say, okay, well, if it doesn't get funded or it doesn't, it can't cover the cost, it is a priority on the funding over others. So John, the way, the way we split it up, so we do bid alternatives, and I know you do construction, so you know what bid alternatives are. You do the base bid, which is what is required by the EPA. We had- For the separation. Yeah, right, uh, and so that, so we use the available funds to do what's, whatever we have, we do as much as we can given the available funds. The add alternates, if we have the money, we add to it. The request is that we go to council and we ask for additional money. Yeah, I mean, at the time the project was oh, estimated, no. the, it was enough money with 
the inflation we had experienced the last 10 years to do all this work. And then the, the unprecedented cost in, in predicting not just inflation, but material and labor cost increases. We've seen all disruption. So, yeah. We understand our question. Yep. Yeah. And I'd be happy to point you towards some folks that might be able to help line the sewer, which could help you with your sewer service uh, and not backing up. Uh, yep. Good. Yes. I wasn't aware of the Middle Street pre-work. So when heavy equipment starts digging up Union Street, is August a good guess? That's a good question. The, the, there's a lot of uncertainty in the progress on Middle Street because we're going to be yes, getting the ledge. Uh, and the you know what we do is we go punch some holes down through Middle Street to try to guess what the ledge profile is through there, but it's intermittent and what's going on in between there is uncertain. So it's really going to depend on how much ledge there actually is. We have a, a guess based on you know, every 100 foot we punch a hole, um, but depending on what they run into there, that really slows down production. So if they don't hit much ledge, they'll be moving much more quickly and heading your direction. Um, if they hit a lot, that slows them down. We're uncertain. So we're, we will, that will be the greatest variable in this. Once they get through that drain line and sewer line on Mill Street, the rest of this will be more straightforward, but we'll continue to update the schedule on the website and let people know what's going on. But you'll, as we drive down Middle Street, you'll say, see them, oh, they're almost a cabin. They're, they're kind of coming this way. And so I think, we're we're also, I think we're optimistic for July, though, right? Yeah. And then keep in mind, the gas company is going to be there for right. yeah. okay. in June. In June, the gas company will be there, maybe the last week of May. And then we're hopeful that Bob's there digging in July because he's got a lot of semantics to go to keep all the utilities active and install all the things he's going to do. And we gotta get that, all that done really before it gets full. So we got a lot of work to do. I saw a completion date of, of spring of next year. Is that new work is gonna be happening in December, for example? Uh no. the hope, yeah, the hope would be mid-November, they're kind of wrapped up for this year. Mm -hmm. There will be some things that they will need to finish next year, but the hope is that substantially will be done with the work by mid-November. We like to let the, the trenches settle over a winter season so that uh, it packs well and the final paving goes on for a very, very soon for the service at the end. So we like to have the subsequent year be the final. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, we have a quick side talk in front of my house and going down the right one corner of my neighbor as well. Will they replace the brick? No, yeah. The, the, the the limits of brick sidewalks within the city, I think, are very well defined because this issue comes up quite a bit as far as who gets brick and how how it works. So this section, and I think it's just whatever's in the historic district. So this section will all be well, we so the, the so the sidewalk on Middle Street will be um, oh, down the side, but down yeah, but down the side of Union Street will be all concrete sidewalk. Yeah, but right now, my house is on the corner. It's a star, and so is so is my neighbor's place concrete. Yeah, I, I think there's concrete. Yeah, this side is concrete. I think I'd like that book for that because it goes with the rest of the house, and it's a star. And they gave me a hard time about lanterns and all windows when I was purchasing the house. It'll look like what the other side of Union is, which is middle has the brick, but no, sorry, uh, middle, yeah, middle has the brick, and then Union is the concrete. No, but right now it's brick. Yeah, we have that yeah. Fresh, and that's it's going to be concrete. That still comes under this star district. Our house. Our yeah. structures on the corner are the best ones in the start. Right. I think the frontage on Middle Street is what's required to be brick. And then the, once you get down the side of the street, similar to the other side of the street, and you read it, you need on that side, it's concrete. And that, again, this issue comes up quite a bit. So they're kind of defining the limits of this is where brick sidewalks go, and this is where concrete sidewalks go. And if, if yeah, not to have it, intermittent changes in what that is, it's uniform. And, for ease of maintenance and everything else, it's it's concrete sidewalks. Yeah, it won't match where it meets the corner. I understand. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, the the the, the limits of what was brick sidewalk is just middle street. All the side roads are concrete, just as they've done with all the other projects on Lincoln Street and all those other side roads. So those no, they're not. It's not exactly true. It's beginning of Union from Islington and off is is uh, brick until it meets my house. Why is it brick there? I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is brick just the brick was it's yeah, worked on the same two years. And then it's short subject, and then it's complicated. So when I built the White House, it started in 2016. Uh, this planning was starting to happen, I think. So we were instructed to install concrete, and I'm within the historic district. So, yeah, your little brick sidewalk, your Brick sidewalk won't match Middle Street, but it'll match mine. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's a famous park house. It's one of the earlier ones. In fact, it's probably one of the earliest in this part of town. No, I know. Yeah. Is there any leeway? Because she, I know your house is beautiful. She has it all. I mean, our architect raved about all that was in it. Oh, yeah, again, I, it, because this issue comes up, uh, I don't think there's any leeway. The, the definitions of what's concrete and what's brick uh, is pretty much defined, and this section is with all the other side roads is it's uh, concrete. Yeah, it's not written in stone. Is the, the parameters have been set in this contract already, which is what I think size of the map. No, I'd like you to reconsider my set because it is a particularly big guard and restored it properly. And it will look fairly ugly. But the cement sidewalk along that small area, it's not far. Believe me, the city owes me. Because the truck in the car that ran into my house and nothing was ever done to prevent that kind of accident. I can't speak to that. Um, no, I'm sure you can, but I'd like to speak to a lot of other practical someone. I'm not about to sit back and not say anything. We've, we've heard what you have to say. Um, we are going to go forward with the brick on middle and the Concrete. Uh, you'd like to send me an email um, stating in what area you'd like. Uh, you want to receive the email and. Uh, She's only really talking about the area. I know we have to do what we do, but there's got to be some exceptions in the world. Go look at her house. I mean, it, the historic district doesn't say on this side of the block you don't have to do the storage windows. On this side, you do. As the contract, well, as the contract sits right now, that is how the contract kind of constructed. Those are the extents that we are doing right now. So we, why, why don't you yeah. just note the request okay. and we'll see what we're able to do. Us and neighbors support it. I don't think uh, the city would appreciate if she decided to put vinyl windows on, on one the side. union section of her and look the other way on that. So it's a pick and choose, but she couldn't pick and choose on a lot of the things that she might like to other shows. Yeah. I live in the historic district too. Yeah. So I know. So I think it's a fair one. We have a question online? Mm -hmm. um, when the question I'm sorry, we, we received a question online. We're going to take that one right now. Excuse me. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, Joe Lewinsky, 187 Union. Um, just want to um, recognize that comment about the brick sidewalk. Uh, I. Um, I'm in favor of brick if that's possible. If there's any any way to to uh, have homeowners supplement the funding of that and be on board for that. Um, so I, I started this late. So uh, what is the exact start date of, of uh, the the contract or the uh, construction? So uh, mobilization uh, next week, uh, the eighth we're looking at, but uh, real digging um, we anticipate beginning the fifteenth. So Joe, I don't know how, how late you started, but the, there's gonna be two 
operations going on more or less simultaneously. The gas company will be replacing the gas main out of the way of this contract on Union Street in either late May or June. The main contractor will be starting his work on Middle Street down by Miller uh, and progressing down toward Union. That probably will take upwards of a month to get to Union. Okay. That will start in mid-May and we're hopeful that he gets to Union Street sometime in early July. But depending upon how difficult Middle Street is, um, that will slide or move forward a little bit. All right, great. Um, so uh, Coffins Court sewer hookup, uh, I assume that you're replacing the interchange between Coffins and Union at that point for future Coffins Court connections? Yes. Yeah, we'll be setting it up for a Coffins Court project, but we're not actually going to go up Coffins Court at this point. Right, understood. And the sidewalks, um, you're planning on the on the concrete, but it's going to be granite uh, curbing? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, gutter and downspout, um, uh, inlets for um, some, pump, some pumps and downspouts, will they be available as well? Uh, they are included in the project, yes. Okay. And um, you mentioned raising of um, certain um, sewer exits of certain homes. Will it be a roadbed raising at all? No, the road's going more or less back. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be slightly adjusted just to improve drainage, but it's similar to what's out there. It'll change, be up or down in different areas depending on where you are to make sure it drains better. But by an inch or two, not dramatically. We're not talking to wholesale dramatic changes. Okay, and just, just a comment. I was listening in on the, uh, the Coffins Court um, sewer problems. Um, uh, anybody that wants to reach out to um, you know, me on uh, if we're around, we're actually I'm going to be starting construction at 187 um, within the month. So, but if you see me around and you want to talk about um, maybe, if, I'm not sure if our, our property is impacted by that or not. We do exit onto Coffins Court with our sewer, um, but I'd be interested in, in uh, um, participating in some discussion if there is some kind of grassroots uh, fundraising. And that's it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. You mentioned the grade of the street. Will the grade of the sidewalks change much? Uh, I mean, they're rather constrained because they've got to tie into the back of the sidewalk. Uh, so they'll be ADA compliant, so one and a half percent slope and ADA ramps and that sort of thing. But in general, other than being brand new, they'll be fairly similar spot. Okay. Yes. I don't know if uh, the request needs to be directed to, but is there a mechanism by which private uh, funding could supplement something like this woman's issue with brickwork, or is the horse out of the barn? The, the challenge with different, you have different brick from house to house, you know, you have brick one place, concrete another, you know, somebody wants to participate, somebody doesn't want to participate. It becomes a maintenance challenge relative to the interface spot where the snow plow hits and ends up unraveling bricks on a regular basis and becomes a, a larger maintenance challenge. Um, so the policy is to, to keep block by block consistent. Um, there are instances where private property owners have elected to, to, you know, to pay for the difference in cost. Um, it was, it's not something that we, and oftentimes, sometimes we let, um, so that I give you one of the houses has a grass strip. Sometimes people want a brick strip in there. If they're willing to pay for that. We might consider doing something like that. But in general, holistically, we want a consistent sidewalk going back to that. So, yeah. I guess I'm not referring only to the correct, but I'm talking about these folks who are subject issue too because of things that are coming up and private uh, property owners want to make an improvement that might somehow affect this project in there. What do we do with that? Well so if you know a good example is if you have an existing water system or water service that needs to be replaced um, we replace the back side of the sidewalk and say you you know the galvanized service you know that needs to be replaced. The private property owner would coordinate the work um, and, and have you know, their contractor be ready to, to, to do that. 
uh, similar stuff happens often with sewer services. Um, so you don't go right to the property and if somebody has an orange bird play you know, a small tower pipe uh, that's collapsing, um, you know, they would coordinate that type of work. Um, is oftentimes, um, you know, people want to redo their driveways and kind of coordinate the timing on things like that. So, I mean, that's what, that's what John and, um, you know, Zach will be out there communicate those types of things. Typically, the intent of this meeting is really to, to you know, be able to put a face with a name, to be aware of, of the process. If there are challenges, you need to communicate um, the challenges to folks. If you have a party, if you have deliveries, you have stuff that needs to get done, you know, make these folks aware so they can adjust if possible. Um, you know, they'll be reaching out to you on a regular basis because they can impact your, your day to day lives. Um, and, you know, we, have, we understand construction is disruptive. We understand it's not going to be exactly what everybody wants. Uh, but at the end of the day, people are going to be happy with the product. It's going it's to be a much, much improved situation. You all, you know, you know Zach, I, I think we should convene a separate time to sit down with these folks and to talk about if, if what options, if any, um, do interim stuff. Um, so, you know, at the end of this month, I'm sure you guys have contact information with Zach and sit down and try to figure out. Um, short of raising another two and a half by time. Yeah. 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 Quick, quick question Plan on that. It's not necessarily relevant to us because we have the space, but with the parking limitations that are going to be on Union, sorry, Cat Union, that will overflow on the on Cabot for sure. Is there, have there been any conversations with maybe the church and seeing if there's opportunity for local residents that are impacted by parking? challenges to maybe use some of that space during the short you know during the time frame so obviously much like we have the obligation of you to be out of there by seven we have the obligation to say have them be out of seven and not when they have their services but is, is there has there been thought about trying to help you know the local no but we could, we could look into that the the uh, masonic lot is available um yes it's a couple block walk but uh, it's available so uh, is is that same path is open all the yeah is that available Yes. There are two properties on the middle. We, we try to do similar in order to go out to the union 504 and 514. I'm yes. not sure if they can notify. Uh, that's outside of this project lines. That's further south of the no, 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 but the, the oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that, they they'll, they'll, you're right. No, I know, you're right. They do they come back through, high park with that. correct. Yep, and they come into a manhole right behind your home, yeah. so there will be connected. Yeah, they just know, but have they been notified? I haven't spoken to them. No, I mean, we shouldn't affect them because we're going to connect to their services within the street, mm -hmm. so they're going to continue to their the direction of sewer is going to no, they don't keep the proper water service, but they no, they're, out the they're, they're really not going to see any impact at all. Yeah, the water service should be maintained. No, but if it's interrupted on, on Union and their water is coming out to Union or their sewer is their sewer is not their water. water. Right. Well, they yes. can amplify if anyone gets interrupted. Uh, if anyone yeah. gets interrupted at their water service, we do notify. Uh, we know where the valves are, which anything within that valve area gets mm -hmm. shut off, so they, they would get notified. Yeah. Oh, okay. How long are the shut off still be? One day, uh, but the, the work day, not all of it. Um, you would not be left with that water overnight. Uh, it would be, be notified of at, all day. at most an eight hour period. It's a work day. Uh, that's yeah, that's, 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 that's most. Cool. That, that is part of the last couple cool. hours. It's usually a tour of the uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the connection to the temporary service should be pretty quick, and then they'll be at the end, near the end of the project. We'll be connecting up the water mains, they'll be a little bit longer shutdowns. So. Brian, um, gentlemen asked about the um, you know, the first start of the work on Union, and you mentioned that it was the gas work, really. I think, how is that done? Are they? Putting the new gas line in, or are they doing all the connections at that time as well? They're going to run a new plastic gas line underneath the south sidewalk. Yeah. They will install the entire main, they'll pressure test it, they'll gas it up, and then they go systematically unhook your gas service from the old main, 
with the new main. And once all the services are done, they disconnect the old main with the gas. And the existing gas is not in the same location. So are they ripping that up or that is that just they just cut that off? Existing gas will become junk in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> And Bob will rip it out when he's going in. When he's going in, yeah. So, so you're not going to have two sets of construction. Right. Right. There'll be one gas line, and we we system, we we have found that putting it under the sidewalk is really the best spot because Bob's going to be digging like a gopher out the road, and uh, the gas line will be nice and safe over by the houses. And we only have to cross it when we go to connect to your house. I guess that's true. And that's a smaller machine, and it's less. It's just a lot safer. Okay. But they're connecting it to the main once that main goes. The gas company will do all that before Bob gets there. They'll put all the gas services and mark them all properly. So that when we start with our project, they're clear and evident where the gas lines are. And they do all the notifications of shutting off. Or they will do a separate thing. So just like all the utilities are basically the same, just, just like the water needs to, get, needs to get shut down to do the, what they got to do. They will do all their gas work and there will be a time where they have to tell you that they're going to disconnect the gas line or they go from low main to usually takes an hour and then they go into your house. And if you got if you have the kind of appliances that's still the final ones, so they'll make sure that you get relit properly before they leave and make sure it looks good. So it's just, it's really the same thing as really putting in the water main. It's going to be so good to gas. Um. Uh, no, another question, if you don't mind. Uh, the, uh, uh, we understand the coffin scores and everything. Is, that, is the section that was being done on Cabot, is that also delayed? That is right. also the same thing as the coffin score. Okay. So that's it's delayed. Delayed. And that's part of the 2.0 over the yeah, yep. okay. So right now, Cabot is all blocked off because you're doing some sewer work on a line that goes underneath. A private residence yep. as well. Yeah, that's upstream. Yep. That's upstream. But is that is that another project that's going on? That or is, is that a, just a small that project? Is, or that what that, that is that? a very minor project of a, on a micro scale compared to what we're talking about. That's going on. I thought there's uh, Barassa and uh, I thought there's a private contractor doing that work. Yeah. Okay. So that's a private Yeah. Okay. So we're working with them, but it's basically got it. Okay. When the gas company digs up that side, the south sidewalk, yes, will they be doing a temporary repaving of that sidewalk? No, they won't. They're going to leave it uh, a hard packed gravel sidewalk. There's no sense really because Bob's going to be right behind them. Yep. There's no sense wasting money on asphalt that then has to be thrown away and recycled and everything else just for a temporary sidewalk. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, that's fair. Worst case scenario, would the city allow me to have my own septic system if the square footage allowed for that? I won't. You, the, it's a weapon. There's a number of reasons why you wouldn't want a septic system. Um, one, they're very, very, very expensive. Uh, a two, two million? <laughs> no, but it's like, right, one point five. Susie, you want to join us? Yeah, and you don't, you don't want it. You're better off with goods. You're going to do that. You're going to tank. You're going to tank. Oh, yeah, you can do that. But it's, we're, we're good, right? It's it's good good line. Sign in. If you did not sign in, please do so so we can include you on the email list and any updates. I